Hey, welcome to the ground instruction for exercise 21 in the flight training manual, which is about precautionary landings. So why do we learn these? There are a lot of reasons why, but also because you're going to have to demonstrate how to do one on your private pilot or commercial pilot flight test. Real world scenario would be something like you're in a cross country and you need to put the airplane down. It could be an emergency, such as the weather is bad or you're low on fuel and you won't make it to an aerodrome, or it could be because you just need to land on an unknown runway or a grass field and you're not quite sure about the surface. So the flight training manual kind of looks at the precautionary as two parts. So pick a field and then fly a circuit pattern approach. I'm going to break it down further into five parts and it's going to be field selection, then high pass, set up your circuit, do a low pass, and then come back around for a landing. Hopefully that'll keep it more organized and you have a better idea of what the entire process looks like. So the first thing you do after you're given your scenario is you pick your field and you can call it doing your owls check. So the first thing you look for is, are there any obstacles, trees, power lines, buildings, mountains, anything that would basically prevent you from getting in on that field. Then you look for wind. Uh, what direction is it coming? Knowing that you always want to land into the wind whenever possible and what strength it is. Is it going crosswind or is it directly down your field? Then you want to figure out, okay, is it a long, long enough field? You're going to eyeball it, make sure it looks like it's long enough. Surface, is the surface suitable for landing? Is it smooth? Does it have any bumps? Can I take off again from it? And slope, is there an incline? Once you have your field, you're going to need a planned procedure to fly an accurate approach onto this field. You want to build a circuit which is at an appropriate distance from your field, and your approach path can take you into a right-hand circuit or a left-hand circuit. It depends on you and also wind or topography. Keep your field in sight and choose landmarks to line you up so that it becomes nice and square. This puts you into a familiar environment as it's very similar to the circuit approaches you typically fly for landing in an aerodrome. So as you can see here in this example, it's a left-hand circuit pattern flown for this approach with the high pass and the low pass over the same area. This is one way of organizing an approach and it's going to be the one that we look at in a bit more detail. So your high pass is just a field inspection at a higher altitude, typically around 1000 foot AGL. And here's when you're going to start looking for obstacles and noting the wind direction and using that to help guide you for setting up your approach. Then you can look for landmarks to also help set up your nice square circuit. The next thing you want to do is your low pass. And this is where you do your, your field inspection. And what you're doing is you're flying past the field. You've got the field on your left hand side. You're at a height of 500 feet AGL and you're flying at about 70 knots indicated. So that means you're low and you're slow. And what it does is it gives you a chance to both time the field. So if you're going 70 knots indicated and you're assuming no wind, your ground speed is about 70 knots indicated, which is about 120 feet per second. So the idea is you fly across the field and you time it and then you multiply the number of seconds by 120 feet to get an approximation of your field length. While you're timing it, you're glancing out the window and you're actually looking at the field. You're nice and low. You can get a good uh, visual on the surface condition of the field and make sure that it's safe to land. Uh, do not descend below 500 feet AGL. Once you have completed your low pass, retract flaps and climb back up to circuit altitude, so 1000 foot AGL. And then on your downwind, you wanna do your pre-landing checks as well as a radio call if required, depending on your scenario. So that would be a pan-pan call, or you can also do a passenger brief. Once you're done that, then you can continue on the downwind a little bit further if you like to set yourself up on a long final because you're gonna be doing a simulated soft field landing on your selected field. Okay, so let's look at the whole process in just one go. So first you approach the field, and as you do, you're kind of doing a high pass. So we inspect the field at a height of 1,000 feet AGL. Check the field for obstacles of wind direction. You always want to land into the wind if possible. Next, you're looking for landmarks to set up your circuit. So, oh, look, there's a nice road here I can use for my crosswind. And then another road by that barn I can use for my downwind, etc. Once you're positioned on the downwind and still at 1,000 feet when you're about 45 degrees off from the threshold of the runway, you can start your turn to base. And as you do so, keep a bit of power in, but bring your airspeed down to about 70 knots indicated and flaps 20. 
so that you have both of these in before you get to the low pass. The low pass is kind of like final, but you're at 500 feet and you've overshot the field to get it on your left hand side for an inspection. So now your airspeed is set and you've got flap in and you're trimmed out. You can begin the low pass and do not descend. Start a timer once you've crossed the threshold of the field. Remember that each second is about 120 feet of distance. While you are timing, look over to get a good visual on the field. How is the surface? Is it smooth? Is it bumpy? Is it suitable for landing? Once you've timed the length of the field, retract your flap and climb back up to about 1,000 feet AGL. And once you turn back onto your downwind leg here, you do your final pre-landing check like you would in the normal circuit, and you can make a pan-pan call and or passenger brief if you need to, depending on your scenario, such as if you are uh, landing due to deteriorating weather at this time. Finally, bring in full flap and prepare yourself for a soft field landing. And because this is a precautionary exercise, we're only simulating the landing, so be prepared to overshoot the field at about 500 feet. So just a couple notes on building your circuit. So here, this image is taken from Google Earth and I measured out what could be the downwind for 1.9. And I wanted to do this to see how long it was um, to give us an idea of how long you know a normal circuit would be. Then I went ahead and took the same line or rather the same distance and uh, stuck it next to you know a field that we could be potentially using for practice for a precautionary and it just shows you how long that downwind actually is um, and how it takes up pretty much the whole field area of this practice area and there is a temptation to make the circuit smaller when you're first going out and doing this exercise and I just wanted to show you that it's so easy to crowd your field because you simply just lose perspective on how big your circuit actually is when you're in when you're at an airport doing circuits. And just before we wrap up here let's talk about the pan pan call and the passenger brief. So the passenger brief uh, you can find on the checklist actually under emergency actions it has all of the items that you should cover with your passenger. It's not an emergency, but you might want to cover those anyway in the event of you're doing, say, um, a soft fuel landing just to wait out weather. So that's where you can find the passenger brief information. The pan pan call, you've seen this when you did your radio license exam, but let's just review. So first you would select where you're going to make that call to. Are you going to make it to traffic? Are you going to make it to ATC? Are you going to make it to the flight service station? Or are you going to do last Last case would be 1215, that's if you can't get a hold of anyone else. Then you read pen pen three times prior to transmitting your message. Make sure that you include the nature of the emergency, your intentions, present position, um, flight level, altitude, and heading if it's required, and any other useful information. So if you are, for example, uh, landing in a field due to weather, you're not going to make your destination. You need to update your flight plan and let them know where you are then uh, do your pan pan call and include that information. Just a note, if you are simply calling flight service station to update your flight plan because you've changed your mind on where you're gonna go, don't use pan pan unless it's actually a distress uh, transmission. So just two helpful tips here. One I've already mentioned is build a large enough circuit so that you can do all the steps and you're organized and you're not rushing to get stuff done. Students can often crowd the field and it just makes it harder for you. You don't want to build the circuit too big because you don't want to waste too much time on this exercise, but just don't crowd the field. Don't make the circuit too small. You'll use the tools that you have. Second tip would be try to get that flap in on what would be your base. Get them in nice and early, level off at a thousand feet, and then take your turn towards your low pass. That way you're at altitude, you're on airspeed, and your aircraft is set up and you can focus on the uh, timing and examination of the field. So some review questions would be to take a moment or take some time just to kind of describe this process to yourself. If it helps, draw an imaginary circuit, rectangular circuit on the ground and just walk through the circuit. And as you do so, tell yourself what it is that you're doing on that particular leg. That way it solidifies the steps that you need to do in your mind before you go and fly this exercise and it will make the whole process uh, faster to learn and easier. As always, if you do have any questions about any of this, just bring them to your next flight lesson.